Thank you very much. It's uh, an honor and a pleasure uh, to be with you today. Uh, John Humphrey was a colleague of mine at the law faculty at McGill University, and as uh, was mentioned, he was also one of the principal drafters of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And I didn't want to begin the session without signaling his uh, unique uh, contributions. I would say that um, when he referred to his experience as an adventure, uh, he also thought of it somewhat as a dream and sometimes as a nightmare. And I'm afraid that that's also probably uh, uh, an accurate description of where we all stand in uh, dealing with uh, intergovernmental organizations uh, treating issues of human rights. They're inevitably extraordinarily complex creatures. I think that John believed in an effective and an active commission on human rights, and I don't think that he would be very happy with the current state of the commission, but he would strongly encourage our efforts at reform. The United Nations on highly charged political issues such as human rights, and I'm here making a statement, human rights is of course about politics as much as it is about norms and law, is of course highly dependent on the cooperation and willingness of member states to act. In most cases, the United Nations is not an autonomous actor that can simply exercise or implement a will. But what does that mean for the Human Rights Commission? Of course, the Commission is made up of sovereign states. It is sovereign states. After the promise of the end of the Cold War, we've seen a lot of horse trading, we've seen unprincipled horse trading, and we've seen many diverse agendas being pursued. And I want to signal that Western states contribute to the problems as much as any others. They often keep adding resolutions on new subjects without any real possibility of implementation, and, I want to emphasize this, without adequate resources for the United Nations to act. Now, I personally support many of the recommendations of the high-level panel on threats, challenges, and change. I won't go into all of the diverse recommendations, but I do want to signal guidelines on the uh, application of the use of force, a clear no to prevent a war. There are some very strong and important statements in the high-level panel report. However, and I think sadly, that the section of the high-level report on the Human Rights Commission is, I think, the weakest part of the report. And I fear that it may signal a dearth of ideas acceptable for reform. There are, however, some reasonable ideas in the high-level panel report, and I want to uh, uphold and highlight a few of them. I think it's true that the Commission needs more political discipline and a greater sense of responsibility. But how can that be achieved? One way it can be achieved is to be realistic about what the Commission can actually do. And I think this involves some measure of discipline on the part of non-governmental organizations as well as states. We cannot keep adding to the agenda without realistic new resources. Secondly, I think we have to work harder to break through the regionalization that has occurred since the fall of the Berlin Wall. It existed before, but it's been highlighted recently. So I would suggest that more efforts have to be made to work with like-minded nations in different regions, at least on specific agenda items. Engagement with South Africa, Botswana, Morocco, Jordan, Argentina, the Philippines, etc., must be pursued more forcefully by Western states. I think as well that it may be time to start looking at an application of the Articles of the United Nations Charter that allow for the suspension or expulsion of member states which consistently breach values of the Charter. I direct your attention to Articles 5 and 6 of the UN Charter. The idea that the High Commissioner for Human Rights should be able to report regularly to the Security Council is, I think, very positive and should be pursued aggressively. It would also be helpful for member states to treat the head of delegation position more responsibly. I think it is true that representatives with substantive knowledge should be appointed more consistently. But I want to emphasize that this will not, quote, depoliticize the commission. Human rights, as I said 
are political as well as normative, and state gatherings are innately political. Put the two together, and you do not escape from political machination, and we should stop pretending that it's possible to do so. I would not give up on the idea of criteria for membership on the Commission. The high-level panel obviously couldn't agree on this, and I guess that's why they opted for universal membership. But I would keep pushing for criteria, acknowledging that they would have to be weak criteria. For example, one might say all members of the Security Council should also be members of the Human Rights Commission, and that in addition to that, it would be important to insist merely upon the ratification of a core set of human rights treaties for membership. I think more substantive criteria would be difficult to agree upon, and I don't think we would have much success. <laughs>